Welcome to our video homily for today, Sunday, July 14, 2024. We are in the same, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. As well, today the calendar remembers us the day of France, Jour de France, Bible of France. We continue praying for all those who are sick, especially for Franny, Caroline Leslie, Lydia Santo. Bob Worsworthy, Betty Morgan, and Dave Carrison. And we pray as well for those in need, the people of Gaza, Ukraine, Haiti, Congo, and South Sudan. And when we pray for those who are mourning, the family of Franklin Sinasak, the family of Jordan Cork, the family of Mrs. Raycroft, and the family of Gloria Nadeau, as well as those who lost their beloved in war's natural disaster and urban violence. And we pray for those who are celebrating today the birthday of Jonathan Westbury and the people of France. The Gospel of today is taken from St. Mark chapter 6, verses 14 to 29. Well, we must say, and we must start saying that this passage from the Gospel of today is quite disturbing and a little morbid. But the message is other issues. And let us see together how we will split in three this narrative. First, we will talk about narcissism. Two, we will talk about seduction. And finally, we will talk about promising. Let us start with narcissism. The Bible mentions at least four heroes. This one is Herod Antipas. He was described as a sly and ambitious, but not capable as his father. In fact, Jesus referred him as the fox. Very active, proud, inflexible leader, he was born despot. But one of his problems was narcissism. That we have, now we have a bad picture of our bad boy for our story today. On the occasion of his birthday, he worshipped himself in a big birthday party with VIP people. That was a perfect scenario for a narcissist. So, this kind of narcissism are more and more in our days, especially among politicians. When they need popularity, they do not hesitate on provoke their own military coup, or self-attacks, or inverting, inventing a sort of adversity with only one goal, popularity. That is linked to populism, a new tendency in our modern political models. The second aspect is seduction. Here, the main role was played by Salome, who provoked a big shock at the party through the potential spiritual risk in the diversion of dancing. Traditions say that Salome was 12 years old, and she danced the seven veils, a kind of striptease for her stepfather. Seduction can lead people to act irrational, and here was an evidence with hero. We cannot be scandalized in our days with this kind of essential seduction because now we have reggaeton and other kind of the popular music with overemphasis on sexuality. This is the new seduction for all kinds of people, in power or regulars. And then the last 
concept of today, promising. We can see more often leaders offering a lot during their speeches. Usually they are populist. The problem is the crowd, the crowd believe what they say. It seems that to ensure popularity you must be populist. King Harold offered half of his, his kingdom. He was no thinking really, but acting an impulse viscerally. That is a real problem from macro to micro. Think about that. I am sure all of us we promise more than our own capacity. But why? Answer to yourself. And as a conclusion, in our journey, we are experiencing situation of narcissism, seduction, and promising. Jesus, during his public ministry, never was using narcissism or seduction or populism to proclaim the good news. So, we are invited to follow Jesus' pattern and model. If it's not, the price can be very high. Let us ask God to shape our lives according to the stature of Jesus Christ. We proclaim a gospel of liberation and inclusivity. There is no room for vain persuasions. Remember, our humbleness, our service, and our genuine love is our witness that God transforms us. Amen. Have a wonderful day and a blessed week. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye.